Two of the following videos are true while the other one is trash. Can you spot the fake? Season 3, Episode 4. Round 1, let's begin. If you take a bolt and wrap some bare copper wire around it and attach this coil to a battery pack, you've now made an electromagnet so when you turn it on, you can pick up small objects like this screw. Bring some water to a boil and mix in sugar until the sugar is fully dissolved and it's saturated. Then wet a chopstick and coat it in some additional grains of sugar. Next, add some food dye to a jar and pour the sugar solution in, mixing it. Then take the chopstick and hang it so it's partially submerged in the solution. After leaving the chopstick for a few days, sugar crystals have grown on it and you've successfully made rock candy. When you think of lightning, you probably think of it as striking from the sky to the ground, but lightning can also strike from the ground to the sky. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. If you thought this was a real way to make an electromagnet, you'd be wrong. There weren't even batteries in this case. An electromagnet works by sending current through a coil to produce a magnetic field. This copper wire has no insulation, so it just acts like a solid piece of copper, meaning current doesn't travel through the coil, but rather straight across. You'd need to use insulated wire to actually make an electromagnet like this that can pick up small screws and bolts. I just made the bolt magnetic in the first demo using the same magnetizing trick from last episode. That means lightning can strike both up and down, and this was a real way to make rock candy. The hot water allows more sugar to dissolve and as it cools the mixture becomes super saturated. The solid grains of sugar on the chopstick provide sites for the sugar to easily solidify on which grows the sugar crystals into the cool rock candy structure. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Next up it's time for round 2. If you take some steel wool and add some vinegar and then squeeze it out and place it into a jar, the steel wool starts at room temperature but after a few minutes of reacting with the vinegar in the air, the steel wool has cooled substantially. You might remember from last season that placing two polarized lenses perpendicular blocks all light from getting through, and it's a great way to test if sunglasses are polarized. However, if you hold a third polarized lens between the two at an angle, now light can make it through all three lenses. If you pour a typical bubbly beverage, the bubbles will rise, but if you pour a Guinness into a glass that constricts towards the bottom, the bubbles will go down. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. Adding a third polarized lens like this does allow light to go through. Guinness bubbles also do go down when poured into glasses that get smaller toward the bottom. There's been a few studies on this if you want to learn more, but basically the upward flow in the center circulates and pushes down the bubbles on the edge of the glass, and the fact that they are smaller nitrogen bubbles rather than larger carbon dioxide bubbles makes them easier to move down. That means this video is fake. Vinegar does react with steel wool and air to cause it to rust more quickly, but this reaction is exothermic, meaning heat is produced and the steel wool actually gets hotter as a result. I just aimed the thermometer at a refrigerated egg to get the lower temperature, and then masked the thermometer in my hand to remove the rest. Here's a quick recap to help you follow before moving on to the next round. Now it's time for the final round, round 3. Pour some bubble solution into a pan and take 4 straws like this and dip it in to make a thin film with an additional metal straw resting on top. Now if you pop the film on the right side of the metal straw, the metal straw will roll to the right. If you take a popcorn kernel and add it to a hot hair straightener, the hair straightener is hot enough to pop the kernel. If you take two Cokes, one diet and one original and submerge both of them in a container of water, the original Coke will sink to the bottom while the diet Coke will float to the surface. You've seen all three videos now, pause to vote in the comments which one you thought was fake. It's true that a Diet Coke can floats while a regular Coke doesn't. This difference in weight is mostly due to the difference between having actual sugar versus artificial sugar. Artificial sugars are much sweeter so you need less of it to make the drink sweet and by boiling off the water in each you can easily see the difference in residue left behind. You also can make popcorn with the hair straightener. Popcorn pops when heated because the water inside the kernel evaporates which raises the pressure. That means popping the soap solution on the right side does not move the straw to the right, but rather to the left. When the film is on both sides of the metal straw, surface tension is pulling equally on both sides and the straw stays in place. Popping the solution breaks the surface tension on that side, meaning the straw will be pulled the opposite way by the remaining film. Here's a quick recap of the final round. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.